Hey everybody, so I'm here today to talk about the film A Man Called Otto. Now this is the Americanized version of the book A Man Called Ova, which was based off a Swedish novel that became very popular all around the world, and it's by Frederick Bachman. And if you had seen my review for A Man Called Ova, the Swedish film version, then you kind of got a glimpse and an idea of exactly what this movie is about. But just for those that hadn't gotten a chance to see that review yet, just to recap, this is about a man, at least in this version, named Otto, who is very bitter, he's the neighborhood crank, he kind of just goes around, he has a very specific routine and schedule that he likes to stick to. He's very by the book, very rule oriented. And when rules are not met, he is very grumpy and he will let that be known. He is not afraid to be <laughs> completely blunt with you if you are doing something wrong, not afraid to call you an idiot if you're acting like one. And Tom Hanks in this version plays the main character of Otto. And again, like I had mentioned last time, it is based off this book, A Man Called Ova by Frederick Bachman. And I really, really enjoyed the book when, it, when I had a chance to read it last year. And so having seen the Swedish version, having read the book, and now having seen this version, I do have some thoughts and I might be comparing and contrasting, but that's just, I think, uh, expected when you see a different version and you also read the book. But I will say in this version, A Man Called Otto, they have definitely changed a lot of things, which I wasn't upset with. I really, really loved kind of the direction they took this one in terms of making it more Americanized. They actually switched a bunch of the characters' backgrounds. Some characters who in the book were written more as um, from Iran or who are also white and Swedish have now been um, just completely altered in terms of you know the background and the ethnicity and the culture. One of the main characters in the book is named Parvena. Parvena, I think that's how you say it. And this uh, American version, they have switched it to um, a Hispanic woman named Marisol. And I gotta tell you right off the bat, she's probably the best part about the movie. She was wonderful. And I feel bad because I'm blanking on her name, but she's an incredible actress who did a terrific job playing that role. Uh, this movie version definitely changes a lot of elements of the book. We kind of, you know, subsidize some characters. We kind of form them into one. We kind of leave out certain storylines of the book that were no longer included. But that's totally fine because understandably, again, like I had mentioned in my last review for the Swedish one, movies and TV shows are not always going to get things right. They can't always adapt things word for word. And sometimes it's fun to see what they're going to do creatively on their end, you know, just to kind of put their own spin on it. So I was actually very happy to see just some of the changes made. There were things about this movie that I was hoping to see more of that the book offered in which they didn't, which I'll get into in just a moment. But first I wanna point out the things that I really, really liked. I think Tom Hanks, who is one of the best actors uh, generationally, like whether from the 80s, the 90s, it's just an actor that I think we've all come to love. He is one of America's just loving individuals <laughs> as an actor on the screen. But I do feel like someone else may have been able to step into this role and give it exactly like what we needed. Kind of what, what Rolf Lasgar did in the Swedish version, something like along that line, more grumpy, more irritable. Tom Hanks did a wonderful job, don't get me wrong, but I could have definitely seen someone else kind of stepping into these shoes and uh, giving it a little bit more life than what was given. The other thing I wanted to mention was that the movie, in terms of its flashbacks, every time we got to see the younger versions of Otto, and Sonia, his beloved. I didn't really feel like there was much of, I don't know. I didn't really connect to that. I didn't really get invested in that version uh, as I did in the Swedish version. Every time I saw the younger versions of he and his wife, I was so like hooked. I was very invested. In this one, I didn't feel like there was any chemistry. I also didn't feel like we got enough flashback to kind of really bring that story closer together. So the American version definitely left out some things that I personally would have liked to have seen more of because as an audience member, even if I hadn't read the book or seen the Swedish version, I probably would have thought the same thing. Like we didn't really get much of the backstory there. We just know that he's mourning and grieving the loss of his wife. And every time we see them when they're younger, I just didn't feel any chemistry. I didn't feel anything uh, pertaining to their relationship, which sucked because that's a really important part of the story to make you fall in love with them to begin with. So that's just my opinion. I'd be curious to know what other people thought about that. Um, but as far as the film goes as a whole, I thought it was a really sweet movie. I did get emotional at times because very much like the Swedish version and in the book, there are moments that are going to come about where you're going to feel something. You're going to just really tap into that and just connect. At least I did, and I think you will too at certain elements. But there are certain parts that I think are just far superior than others emotionally. And anything in present day with Tom Hanks 
I thought were the best parts. Flashbacks, just not the business. I didn't really enjoy those as much. But Mark Forrester, who's a director that I really enjoy and appreciate his work, I still thought did a wonderful job for what he was given and for what he uh, uh, worked with. So it's a movie that I think if you are that person that really just wants something really humble, very sweet, very personal and very emotional, there is a lot of heavy themes that go throughout this movie, for sure. Then, you know, I think it's a movie that you're going to enjoy. It's a movie that I think you can catch maybe at like a matinee. It's not a film that I think you have to necessarily go to the theater and watch, but if you should, like a matinee with a friend or a family member. But otherwise, it's a movie that you can definitely watch at home. It's not like the movie-going experience, but it is still a movie I'm going to recommend mildly on the performances, especially the woman that played Marisol. Again, I feel bad that I forgot her name, but uh, just wonderful acting throughout. I do think the Swedish version is a lot better, but I do think this American version has its moments for sure. So if you have seen it and if you've seen both movies or read the book, I'd love to know how you compare and contrast all three. And uh, if you have an opinion, please leave your comments down below. I'd love to socialize and engage with you about that. But yeah, other than that, those are my thoughts on the film. And I'd love to know what you think.